I feel that this is something I need to share with you because um, celebrating 70 years of ministry is a challenge to me, but I want it to be a challenge to you as well. And I just feel something that's in my spirit, and it's from uh, the epistle to the Ephesians. And the, to me, the importance of the book, the, the, the letter to, from Paul to the Ephesians, is that it's, my father used to say, it's the most spiritual of all the epistles. And I find there's a great deal in it that I, I enjoy. And I want to share this with you, and I'm going to read to you. It starts off in the first verse, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God to the saints who are at Ephesus. And can I say, in starting when it says there, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God. And that is very strategic because Paul was not one of the 12 apostles, nor, of course, after Judas fell of the 11, he really came in. And although he was not one of the two who were elected, uh, well, it was one of the two that was elected to replace uh, Judas, that's why it's quite significant that Paul, who wasn't elected by the 11, says that he is an apostle by the will of God. That makes him different. And then he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now, to most of us, the heavenly place is heaven itself. But what Paul is referring to is the God and Father of Jesus Christ, who has blessed us now with all spiritual blessings, that we should now be in those heavenly places and in those spiritual blessings. But it's even more than that, because uh, it goes on to say, uh, and for example, if I look in verse 11 of the same chapter, Jesus Christ, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his will, that we should be to the praise of his glory, in whom also you trusted after you heard of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. Now, it's very interesting here because what he's saying is this, and Paul is saying, we have obtained an inheritance. <laughs> when I'm speaking to Russians, uh, <laughs> it used to be a joke, particularly in the old days under communism when they had no freedom there, that every Russian's dream, and you know, if I mentioned this, they would all laugh because it's true. Every Russian's dream in those days under communism was that he would have a rich uncle in America and that the uncle would die and they would inherit that place in America. Now, for them, living in the suffering and the persecution and the poverty under communism, that was a dream of an inheritance. And so that's why I see the importance of what Paul is saying here, that we, you and I, have received an inheritance. Now, the inheritance we receive, an inheritance only comes when somebody dies. You don't get the inheritance when they're alive. That's why <laughs> these poor Russians needed the uncle to die in order that they would get the inheritance. So what's happened is, is we have the inheritance because Christ died. And what we inherit 
Come on, let's get this real. What we're actually inheriting is all the glory and the power and the blessing that Jesus had. And more that Jesus would receive. Everything that Jesus not only had but would receive, everything he's given to us as an inheritance. Now that's very powerful because we need to live in that inheritance. I remember when I was a, a, a pastor um, many, many years ago, actually, yes, uh, in the town where I still live, and uh, visiting a number of people, one man that I used to visit a few times, uh, he lived in absolute poverty. <laughs> uh, when I went into his house, he had no wife, no family, no children. He seemed to live in one room. He possibly had another sleeping place, but uh, that room was uh, filthy and dirty. The furniture was broken. When he offered me a cup of tea to drink, the cup was so cracked and broken, I didn't want to drink it. And I, I was just so sorry for this man living in such poverty. But you know, the amazing thing was I began to talk to him. And when I talked with him, look, he had no car, he didn't appear to have a job. And, uh, and, 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 and he, all his circumstances was poverty. Yet when I began to talk to him, I found out that he had investments, he had shares in gold mines, he had in industrial investments, and when we begin to look at what he had, I found out that he was probably the richest man in the town. And yet the thing was, despite those riches, he lived in poverty. And I want you to understand what God is saying through this. So let me continue. You see, we receive this inheritance in Christ that in receiving it, we should be to the praise of his glory. In other words, as we receive and live in that inheritance, that is a literal living witness and testimony of the glory of Christ's inheritance. And if you don't live in it, you don't reflect that glory. If you don't demonstrate it, you don't reflect that glory. But it goes more. Because it also says that the truth that we've received is the gospel of our salvation, in whom also after that we believe this gospel, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance. Now, what Paul is trying to express here is something very wonderful. He says that the Holy Spirit when we receive the Holy Spirit, it is the earnest, the foretaste, the foretaste of the inheritance. So although we're not going to get the full inheritance until we get into the kingdom, the Holy Spirit is, well, I like to put it like this, it's the down payment on the inheritance. So what we can receive through the Holy Spirit is all the power, all the glory that God had in Christ, and we can receive it now through the Holy Spirit. So we should be able to, this is how we do the works that Jesus did. And I, I don't agree with some people who are trying to argue today that it's a false teaching when uh, people claim that they can do the same miracles that Jesus did and greater. <laughs> That's exactly what Jesus said. He said, you should, these miracles will you do and greater because I go to my father. But it's more than that. Because you see, if this is the down payment on our inheritance, uh, I'm sure that many of you will realize, you know, when you go to buy a car, nowadays you, you don't buy the car, you, you pay a deposit and then you, you take, buy the car and finance. And um, in Russia, the system was very clear. You took about 20 years to buy a car and you paid every month out of your wages, but you didn't get the car till you'd paid the full amount after maybe 10 or 20 years. And I think the average was 20 years. But here, you go into the showroom, you see that beautiful shiny car, you put down a deposit on that car, you drive it out of the showroom, 
This is the point. And when you get out there, yeah, I know what it's like, pedal to the metal. Yeah, yes, you're out there and you're driving it and you're enjoying it. It's yours to enjoy. Although you've only got the down payment. Do you understand? We have to understand that spiritually, that we've only got the down payment through the Holy Spirit, but that foretaste, that early down payment enables us to live in the power and the glory of all the glory of God. Put it another way. Uh, I think sometimes people in Russia don't understand how long it takes us to buy a house. I know <laughs> to buy the house I'm living in now, although I did build it, I had to borrow the money and it was borrowed over a period of 20 years. And then I think I extended it up to 25 years, maybe 30 years. And it took me all those years to actually buy the house. But what happened? When I made the down payment, I got the key. And when I got that key, I put it in the door, I opened the door and I stood in the hallway and maybe I went into the kitchen. Oh, isn't this wonderful? Look, I, 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 I've got the key to the house, but look, I'm in the kitchen. Oh boy, no. I went right through the whole house. I was in every room, in every cupboard, you know. I was possessing the whole house when I'd only put a down payment. And I want you to understand that this is a typical illustration of the Holy Spirit in us. That when we receive the Holy Spirit, that's the down payment, that's the key to open the door so that we can go into all the glory and the power of the Holy Spirit and all the power of God because we go in and possess the whole thing. We don't stay in that one room. We don't just simply say, boil a kettle and say we can drink tea and then go home. We that house now is ours. We're living there and we're enjoying every part of it, every room, every part. And if there's a God, you know what I mean? So from the down payment and that key, that key unlocks the whole. And we've only got the down payment. That's what Paul is trying to emphasize here with the Holy Spirit. That the Holy Spirit literally is that damn payment that now we can enter into the whole. I want to challenge you before I even go any further in this. I want to challenge you because this is how I've lived. And if you understand, people wonder how it is that I can preach the way I do, why I can see the many miracles and why God has so blessed the ministry. It's because I learned from my earliest days the significance of this message that that Holy Spirit gives you a key to all the glory and power of God, the ability to do what Jesus did and more. That is what he was trying to say when he said, I'm going to my father and when I go to my father, I will pray. He will send the Holy Spirit and these works that I do, you will do and greater because I've gone to my father. And I want you to understand that we can anticipate the greater miracles, the greater power, the greater glory. That's why it's been so expensive, because <laughs> I don't mind admitting uh, the first house I, that I had built, as I still live in now, wasn't quite as big in those days. But in anticipation, I expanded it. I put more rooms on. And, and uh, I, I, I one time thought, I'll never finish this house because I'm always adding to it. And it's a joke in the family that every time I look at it, I'm thinking, what else can I add on? What else can I do? And it should be the same in our experience of the Holy Spirit. And I want to say to you, particularly those of you who are joining me in celebrating my 70 years, that's the realization of how I live and why I've seen the blessing of God in such a way and why. Just as I'm looking at my house, and literally I did it the other week and said to somebody, I don't know, well, I think it was to some of my family that were around, and I was saying, look, I'm looking at the house and I'm thinking, what else I can do to it? Either make it bigger or more beautiful or whatever. So this is my experience after 70 years. If I feel that I've entered into all the rooms, let's add some more on and let's get more of the glory of God. 
But you see, the scripture goes on. You see, because Paul says, this Holy Spirit of promise, the earnest, in verse 14, the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. So in actual fact, even our salvation is not yet complete. Oh, yes, complete in the, uh, we've got a new life, we're free from sin, free from the power of Satan, and we're living this new life. But there is something even more when this body of ours, which is purchased by the blood of Christ, is finally redeemed out of this world of sin and taken into the glory of heaven, then this glory will all be so much more wonderful. But you see, your vision can be so dim diminished because if you're living in a tiny little house with only two rooms in as so many houses were in Yorkshire, one up and one down, you're lucky if you had uh, even two separate bedrooms, you certainly didn't have a bathroom and basically your kitchen was in the living room. But if you're only seeing your spiritual experience as that limited, then what I want to tell you is whatever the limitations down here, when we get into the kingdom of God, it will expand. But I believe the expansion in heaven is proportionate to the expansion down here. That only of those who understand and live in the power and the glory and live in that house and expand that house down here will really know the true glory because... It's only when finally we're redeemed into the kingdom that we experience all the power. And I must bring you one last verse. It's in verse 18 where Paul says that the eyes of your understanding might be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the sense. In other words, I pray that you will enter in as I'm celebrating this anniversary, that you will, your eyes will be opened, that you will know what the hope is, what the riches are, what the riches and the glory of God are in you, the riches of his glory in us. And I want you to enter into the power and the riches of that glory. And that's why it's so important that I celebrate this anniversary with you. I want you to experience not just what I have, but more, ten times more, because I'm only at the beginning. That's why I can't even die. I don't want to die because I'm only just exploring. I'd said I'm only in half the house. I've not even got into the final rooms yet. I've still so much more to see here before I finally get into the glory of God. Let me pray with you. Father, I do pray that just as this scripture through my life has been such a challenge to me to experience, to live in, and to enter into your power and your glory. Oh, Father, those people who are watching and joining with me, Father, grant that they also may begin to live in that inheritance now and not simply wait to heaven. And Lord, show them that we can literally do more than Jesus did. It's not a fallacy. It's not a false teaching on false doctrine. Oh, God, I've lived it. And grant, Lord, that they will see that that's how I've lived. And that's only a beginning. In Jesus' name, amen.